everyone, this is Adobe Illustrator Day 1. I get you started on how to use Adobe Illustrator. So when I launch the program from the app, um, it's going to bring up all my recent pro uh, projects. I've got quite a few. You, you won't have anything on the screen. That's fine. You're going to go to Create New. And there's a Recent tab. I've obviously opened things recently. Um, you, when you launch this, may not have anything, so you'll want to go to print. And the general size that we usually use is letter, um, and that's fine, but you might see that here it's measured in points, which is sort of unusual. Um, if we change this over in the units to inches, most graphic design things are measured in inches in Imperial still, um, so we want to have it be 8.5 by 11, which it is. And you can work vertically or horizontally by just switching between those two. And then you can go ahead and create. All right, so this is my workspace. Um, at the top is my main menu. Up there under file, you'll find like save and close and quit, that type of thing. Um, some things, especially in view, um, that might help you. You can zoom in and zoom out. Um, there's a shortcut for that, so it's command plus and command minus. Um, so you can do that here. I'll show you. So they're zooming in and they're zooming out. You can also do it down here. There's a toggle that's quite handy. Um, I find in Illustrator there's about three ways to do everything. Then on the left hand side is our tools and then when we actually click our tools you'll see that the right hand side the properties tab changes and so depending on the tool that I've clicked I'm going to get different um, options in that properties tab. And then the other thing is layers, and as we work, this is an important part. Um, this will help you rearrange them and change the order um, so that you can bring things to the front or to the back. So to begin, um, I am going to just do a couple of things with the rectangle tool. So I've got one here. I'm going to change the color. Um, to duplicate a shape, I'm going to click and hold Alt and drag out to make a second one. And this one I'm going to make a different color just so that we can see it better. And then I'm going to make one more. And I'm going to make it a different color as well. Nice and monochromatic color scheme. All right. Now, once I've got all three of those objects, um, if I go to my layers, I've got them selected. And you can see that they're highlighted, which actually is helpful. So if I want to just move this one, you'll see that it lights up just that one rectangle. So I can turn it off if I decided I'm not sure I really like it. That can be really handy instead of actually deleting the layer, just turning it off. Um, Another thing that you can do is if you know for sure you don't want this one to move, like regardless of whatever else you're working on, you really want to make sure that this uh, rectangle doesn't move, you can lock it up by clicking in this tab here. So now if I try to move it, it will not even let me select it. I can still move the other ones around or I can grab everything and move it around and it is unaffected, which is handy. Other thing that I can do is if I'm working with a composition, I can say, Oh, I actually want this pink one on top, or this light color one on top. So I can right click, and if you don't have right click on your mouse, it's not working. Um, you can always hit control, which is your right click. Sorry. There. And what I can do is go to arrange, and I can go bring to front. And you can see that that has actually brought it up on top. The other way to do this is to actually take the layer, in your layers tab and drag it down and so you can also drag things and arrange the layers in the layers tab. Um, one more thing grouping and arranging so if I always want these to be in this exact position and I always want them to come together when I move them another really handy thing that I can do is I can select all three of the elements again I can right click and I can hit group so now, even if I grab one, they will always come because they've been grouped. And you can see that that's, you can see in, in the layer that, that how that's been set up. Um, all right, I'm gonna undo that. To undo anything is control, uh, sorry, command Z. So I've ungrouped them. So now they're, hang on, no, they're not ungrouped. Hang on. It's not working, you can always go undo, edit, undo. There, there we go. 
Um, all right, now that they're separate, another uh, important sometimes thing that you want to do is arrange them so that they're perfectly lined up. Um, so I've got three here and I could try to move them over and line them up. Um, and you'll see that when I do line them up uh, perfectly, you get this, um, this purple line, which is sort of like an alignment, which can be handy, but there's also a faster way to do it. So one thing you can do is select them all, go to properties, and go to align. And you can see here, I can quickly click them and they'll all align to the left. And I'll just make these a bit bigger, different sizes so you can see. Uh, I can select them all and I can center align them. I can select them all and I can right align them. And then just like that alignment, you can also do uh, do it the other direction. So the alignment where you've got them all aligned to the top, all aligned in the middle, and then all aligned on the bottom. So that's sort of another important thing. And it just in general, if the thing that you're looking for is missing, all of your tabs and all of your palettes are under window. So I often sometimes will go to like workspace and I'll go to essential and I'll do that. Or maybe I'll go to classic and sometimes there's different uh, tabs that'll open for that and I like classic because then it's got your colors which I often use and if you want it to stay you can pull it out um, the other one I like out is stroke often especially when I'm doing more like shapes and then what is the other one that I like the other one I like is character I'll see it there so I'll go to type and I'll get character and I'll leave that out so that they're always here when I need them. All right, and our final thing is saving. So we're gonna go file, we're gonna go save as. Now when we're saving for these lessons, um, you're welcome to just save it as an AI. So I'm gonna put my name and this is um, lesson uh, opening doc and saving whatever whatever the title um, I like to save to my desktop I like to make a new folder I'm gonna put all of my lessons in the same folder so I'm nice and um, organized and I'm gonna then have all 12 of these lessons saved in that one spot which would be really helpful uh, leave it as Adobe Illustrator that's perfect and then I save okay now, if this was a project, so that's fine for Illustrator tutorials. If this was a project, um, we'll get to those in a little bit, um, you would also need to save as a second format, as a PDF. The reason being is that an AI file is no good at the printer or it's no good to send to like, like a birthday party invite or something that you've designed. You can't send them an email because the person would then have to have Illustrator to open it. So instead, what we want to do if it's, we want to create a shareable format is we want to create a second for version, a second format, and we're going to go file, and we're going to go save as, and this time we're going to save it also as a PDF. And this is just for projects, so not for the lessons here that we're doing, but in the future you're going to want to save it as an AI and a PDF, and you're going to submit both for project-based work, if that makes sense. All right, thanks guys.